On tonight's show, we go back to Route 66 and continue our road trip series and end it at the Santa Monica Pier in Los Angeles as we continue on historic Route 66. Next on America's number one road trip television show, it's Jan Scott tonight. This is a nice map they have at the Route 66 Diner here in Albuquerque. We're starting here at the diner in Albuquerque, and then we're going to Gallup, New Mexico tonight, stopping in all of the small towns, then to Williams, Flagstaff, Holbrook, uh, on through the Mojave Desert to the Santa Monica Pier. Behind me is the Aztec Motor Court. The Aztec Motor Court, as it was first known, is one of the best examples of a relatively unaltered pre-World War II tourist court, remaining along Route 66 in New Mexico, right here in Albuquerque. It was built in 1933, four years prior to the realignment of Route 66 along Central Avenue. It is the oldest tourist court along East Central Avenue, as well as the oldest functioning motel along Route 66 in New Mexico. This is Mohammed. He's had the Aztec Motor Court since uh, 1991, huh? June 1991. And it was run down? It was completely run down the place, uh, and it took us almost about uh, first to three months uh, to just to get it fixed up. And then we started getting the contract with the Salvation Army, and the reputation was very bad over here because we only, I was only seeing those guys with the drug dealing things and the prostitution, so we had to evict all of them. And I had 18 rooms empty for first three months in 1991, June, July, and August. And then from September, we started getting people from the Salvation Army, people from the church, the homeless people. And then we started it up uh, and then started to bring the, all the decorations and the landscaping and try to renovate the outside. Yeah. Um, my name is Phyllis Evans. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and I've, I've lived here for three years. I have a home in Hawaii. Yeah. I came here um, temporarily and found out I don't need arthritis medication here. Oh, so, yeah. so I hang out here so most you, of you the were, time. You were a professor? At Michigan State University, oh, yes. Yeah. 25 years. So what's the deal here? What did you what did you make over here? The charm of the Aztec isn't all in the decoration. Uh -huh. uh, it's Mohammed and his philosophy of trying to run this as a community, a family as he calls it. I call it a community. And so I wanted to see that uh, the direct the outside reflected on what was going on in the, on the inside. And Mohammed has been diligent in keeping out prostitution and drug drug and things yeah, like that. Yeah, you've been telling me about it. My kind of guy. Right. So this right. just grows. Um, it's not a, I, we don't want it to look like a holiday and we want it to look like if you're homing down the highway back in the 50s, this is the kind of place that you would be staying at. You don't have to worry. This doesn't look like the Holiday Inn. <laughs> St. Louis, Joplin, Missouri, Oklahoma City Looks mighty pretty, you'll see Amarillo, Gallup, New Mexico coming up with this 66 diner. Well, I had a restaurant across the street for about 14 years, which I just recently sold. And kept looking at this place and thinking it sure should be a diner rather than a transmission shop, which is what it was at the time. 
originally it was a Phillips 66 gas station built back in the late 40s. So <clears throat> it had all the Art Deco uh, influences on the structure, and, and it just seemed like it'd be a fun thing to do. But why Route 66? What the heck's the deal? Well, we're there. Are you some kind of Route 66 nut? No. Uh -huh. We we toyed with what to call this place. And, decided that since we're on Route 66, it passes 25 feet in front of our door here, that it made sense. Did you grow up here in Albuquerque? No, I didn't. Where'd you grow up? I grew up in Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. But I've been here 20 years now, and so I'm pretty much I'm practically a native. Yes. Not all parts of Route 66 have the snow plowed off of them. We tried to drive on this one here in New Mexico, but we decided to turn around. We'll get back on the interstate and join Route 66 a little further down. If you ever plan to motor bus, travel my way, take the highway, that's the best. Get your kicks on Route 66. It winds from Chicago to L.A. More than 2,000 miles all the way. Get your kicks on Route 66. Benny DeSoto is the uh, manager of the Vietti Cubero General Store. Tell us the history in one minute or less. In one minute or less, yeah. okay. The Vietti Cubero was built in 1936 when they realigned US 66 going through here. It used to go through Cubero. And it was the only rest stop between Albuquerque and Grants for a long time. There was a cafe across the street, and so many people would stop here, stay in the motel, um, stay in the, eat in the cafe across the street. Uh, Ernest Hemingway stayed here and wrote The Old Man in the Sea. There were several, um, Vivian Vance used to have a place close to here. She used oh, to be yeah. over here quite a bit. Um, Any contemporary headbanger rock bands? Not that I know of. <laughs> if they've come through here, they haven't made their presence known. There's uh, Most of our trade now is from local people around here because when they put I-40 through here, um, it kind of did away with a lot of the traffic on Old 66 unless it's somebody that's following Route 66. Yeah. That um, they got their book in their one hand and they, they're driving along trying to find all these spots. This is what it was called. Okay, so what was it called? Okay, it was called the Via di Cubero Cafe when it yeah. first opened. Yeah. And it was first operated by Sidney Gottlieb's sister, Lily, from Chicago. And she won the... She won the Pillsbury Bake Off contest in 1950 for her orange Kiss Me cake. She won the Pillsbury Bake Off in 1950. And... Pie people, my kind of people. <laughs> Pie country. Mary Gunn took over. She started running this. No, in. wait. I want to know about the pie recipe. It's, pie. It, no, it was orange kiss me cake. Yeah, and it's still in the Pillsbury. It's still in the Pir Pillsbury Bake Off cookbook. You ever have anybody around here that makes moose turd pie? Nope. Never, never hear of that? Uh -uh. Never nope. heard of that one. Bad well, stuff. <laughs> you don't ever want to eat it. You give it to people you don't like. You pick up a moose turd or a big cow pie, cover it with whipped cream, and give oh. it to somebody. <laughs> All right, that's it. That's an old cowboy story. Okay, some of the people that frequented this cafe were Lucy and Desi Arnaz as they passed through, Vivian Vance, and the Von Trapp family, among others. The famous Von Trapps. Mm -hmm. They were the trap people, trapeze people, circus people. Uh, they? No, mm -hmm. no, were they? the Von Trapps. No, that was the musical family from. Um, That's right. Set in, I go to the hills for yeah, the sound of those Yeah, but they weren't trapeze people. people. Right. They were singers. 
You ever have any other circus people around here or singers that come through? I'm a little wacky, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> well, we return to Grants, New Mexico, and we're going to visit the Mining Museum. Uh, look at this auger in back of me. This thing is bigger than I am. Well, we're down in a uranium museum here in Grants, New Mexico. They mine a lot of uranium for nuclear submarines, atomic bombs, and... readers and viewers when it comes to radiation and nuclear energy. Uranium mines go for miles and miles and miles underground. Uranium everywhere. Uranium for you and I. We'll take a little walk down this hall. Actually, shaft, mine shaft, but... Big ventilating system in here. There it is, uranium. <sighs> now I'm going to have to go home and take a big shower. Check myself with a Geiger counter. Well, you have to be very careful with fire down here because this is uh, the uh, explosive area with the magazine area. And, uh, have I told you about my new uh, 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 Zippo lighter? Let's see if I can. Oh, no, don't light it down here. You'll blow things up. Ah! Now, you notice this is the uh, Buckley Powder Company. Look at this ammonium nitrate fuel oil mixture. Hey, that's what Tim McFay and Nichols use. Let's see if we can light this bag on fire here. Should we try it? Uh, Alright, let's see if it... Oh, you better not do it! Oh, no, no! Alright, uh, time to go back up. Let's see. Press, switch. Ah, uh, this is Mr. Scott. We're ready to come back up. Yeah. It, no, we'd like to come out of the mine now, please. A shower? Yeah, I'll take a shower. Well, I am Thomas Lamance. I'm 83 years old and one of the best jumpers in this part of New Mexico. We're standing right here between Old Highway 66 and Interstate 40, about halfway between Blue Water Village and Pruitt. How long have you been out here on Route 66? Well, this place about 15 years. 15 or 50? 15. Uh-huh. We came over... 66 and covered wagons from Oklahoma in 1928, though. Uh, but in 1950, I went to California and came back about 15 years ago. You came here in covered wagons? Yeah. From Oklahoma? Uh-huh. We had two covered wagons and drove through some extra horses. Uh, we was 31 days on the road. Oh. I didn't think they had covered wagons in 1928. Oh, yeah. In fact, there wasn't too many cars. They had a lot of, lot of wagons and buggies. And uh, in California for about 30 years. Uh -huh. And 90% of this stuff came from uh, from auctions. I was a junk auctioneer. Oh, yeah. And uh, I had a place there. Still got a place there in California. Mm hmm and I just stored it, and every year we'd make one or two trips, and I'd bring a load back. <laughs> yeah, I've got them sheds outside, crammed full of stuff, too. Well, some people say this stuff is worth millions. <laughs> well, uh, I expect I'll throw away millions of dollars. I, uh, I know I uh, sold a lot of antiques for nothing in my auction here. It's considered to be antiques. This isn't junk, is it? Uh, no, I buy junk and sell antiques. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your country western band in the 1930s. Well, <clears throat> I played the fiddle. And my, my brother played the guitar. And my best friend, uh, friend played the banjo. And <clears throat> we all went to the army, and they didn't get back. So uh, I didn't. Try to hook up with anybody else. Do you ever know, like Bob Wells and all those boys? No, uh, I never met them. I was an old hillbilly out here. They didn't come through this part of the country. <laughs> you were a hillbilly? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Could you sing a song for us right now? Oh, uh, I don't know. 
don't know. The favorite old Mexican song, Western song that, that people probably never heard. Well, I don't, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Maybe a bar or two. Take these chains from my soul and set me free. That mighty Satan has on me. My life's chained in sin and no light can ever end. Take these chains from my soul and set me free. I, I improvised that from take these chains from my heart. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, my name is Ann Ortega. And I'm part of the Ortega family who own this, this hotel, the El Rancho Hotel in Gallup, New Mexico. It was purchased by my father, Armand Ortega, 10 years ago at an auction. Um, he purchased it. It was, what do I say? <laughs> it was um, very run down at the time. And um, he remembers it from when he was small. And he always liked coming here and um, seeing all the action a long time ago. And uh, he wanted to rebuild it and, uh, because he loved it. And he bought it and put some money into it and made it like it was then. We have four generations of Indian trading in our family. Um, it starts from my great-great-grandfather to my brothers now who are trading. Um, Okay, um, they exchange with the Indians, Indian arts and crafts for goods or for money. Now it's mostly money, but 20, 30 years and before then it was um, exchanging food and gasoline and other things that they could use. For trading for what? For jewelry, pottery, rugs, um, any of their arts that they make. Tell us where you grew up. Sure, I grew up in Sanders, Arizona, yeah. um, at my father's trading post, and um, we lived behind the, the store. It was uh, back then the trading posts were all connected to the house, so you lived in the trade. Basically, we lived with the trading post. Really? So, like, did you have all these grizzly guys come around with furs and hadn't taken baths in months? And Actually, they were mostly women with Navajo rugs um, and jewelry. And um, also we would do some pawning. They would, we would keep their jewelry for and give them money and then they would come back and, and take their rugs and their jewelry later. Sally No of Gallup, New Mexico. Uh, I have lived here most all of my life. Came about the time that Route 66 was named nationwide. Uh, so I have a special feeling toward Route 66. We grew up together. Uh, Gallup has always been very special for Route 66 simply because it was one of the original communities. And being an original community on Route 66, our community had races with other communities to make sure that we were the shortest and the best way to California. And we were. It, in the lobby of the historic El Rancho Hotel. This hotel was built in 1937 to provide a very gracious stay for the movie stars who came into the community to make motion pictures. Uh, for 30 years, Gallup was a movie center. And this hotel provided all the ambiance that they were looking for, as well as the scenery around. Did you meet John? Wayne came into this community. He didn't really stay long periods of time, because normally his movies were made up in the Four Corners area and Monument Valley. But he always came into Gallup and stayed at El Rancho. And legend tells that he stayed here with his horse out here in front, uh, in the stables, and he would ride every day. And every day after he finished riding, he would ride up through the front door, into the bar, order a beer, and one for his horse. <laughs> when you leave 
Hotel El Rancho, you head down Route 66 to the west, and here is the wonderful Santa Fe Railroad Station that was designed and built under Fred Harvey by Mary Coulter, who was the architect. Some of you may know her as the individual who designed Hopi House at the Grand Canyon. Mary Coulter wanted to build this hotel and this ticket office simply because it was her idea to build a Pueblo designed house. This in Gallup became the signature for Gallup, the railroad station and the station for the buses and for the taxis are still located here. It is a transportation center even today. One of the last WPA buildings built in New Mexico, Works Progress Administration, during the Great Depression, was the McKinley County Courthouse. The three-story Pueblo Revival Building was designed by Trost and Trost, and they, in turn, designed the interior to utilize New Mexico products. Consequently, the furnishings the paintings, the tile work, the tin work was all designed and made by New Mexico artisans in the community. It was the very last of the WPA buildings and is still used today. It has the largest mural in the state of New Mexico in the courthouse. And the mural itself it has been restored and retained through the years it was completed in 1938. As traders, they developed what is known as a cottage industry in their own area. And consequently, the Gallup area has the largest cottage industry in the United States. Individual craft, craftsmen work throughout the year, bring things into town to be sold to the traders for either cash or goods. And with that uh, coming into town, Gala produces 85% of all Indian jewelry and craft shipped worldwide, turquoise. And the Indians were encouraged to use sterling silver and uh, turquoise that was brought into the community from the mines in Nevada, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico the big pieces, of, and then the, the Indians cut them down themselves to make the jewelry. They don't buy it pre, pre-done. Is it under the tree with rattle trap cars that are falling apart from Joplin, Missouri? Arizona. And... Oh, there you go. There he is. 
Take your picture, you don't mind, do you? I'll put you on TV. Me up because I wouldn't fight for him. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't. Mule, hi. Oh, he's so cute. Yes, you are. You're cute. Hi. Oh, he's a good buddy. It's my new phone. What I got me a mule. Hi, pal. Want a cigarette? No, he wouldn't want that. <laughs> yeah, you're a good guy. You want something to eat? I don't have anything. Oh. Yes. Okay. Well, we're gonna go now. See ya. Here we go. It's the uh, Reno Canyon. It's the Reno Canyon Bridge. Behind us is the Reno Canyon Trading Post, which there's nothing left to it. They're ruins. But further up the road here, in the beginning of Arizona, is the new trading post. And as you notice, not all of the uh, highway on Route 66 is um, is asphalt. Some of it's dirt. Where are we? Hi, I'm Roy. This is the 66 Diner in Sanders, Arizona. And we've had this diner for on Route 66, and it's been... Uh, you know, traveled around, pulled around on, on the Route 66 for, for many years. Oh. Do so. It has a hitch on the front of it, and, and now it's a, it's a stationary uh, uh, building, and, and we've added onto it for extra seating and, and so on. The location, you just put a trailer on, go no, to the next location? We're, we're pretty much here all the time. <laughs> but we're, not, we're not pulling it around anymore. What's the story with Sanders? What, what are you known for for, uh, for meals? What's your favorite? We have, a lot of, for a lot dishes. Of, we, we have a lot of burgers. Yeah. We, we can fix a burger uh, several different ways. We have green chili cheeseburgers. We have all American burgers. We have the uh, 66 burger, which is uh, three quarters of a pound uh, hamburger. It's it's really big. Now they told me I should eat here. Yes, you should. <laughs> it's a very good meal. Okay. Uh, so you worked here for five years? Oh my god, look at the size of this burger. Where'd you go? <laughs> so tell me about Ina. 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 She used to own this place. She used to own this place? Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. Right here. Oh, there it is. Next to it. What is this now? It's a 66 burger. Uh huh. From the Route 66 diner. Oh my god. It's three quarters of a pound. It's a cow. You can also get a double 66 burger, yeah. which is two of those patties. I don't think so. On a hamburger. Oh, yeah, I could write my name on it. Yes, you can. That's a jam. <laughs> Come here. Get over here. J A N. This is pretty cool. And do you like mustard? He better. <laughs> <laughs> now, two people tell us to make sure we stop in Sanders and the diner has been uh, towed to different uh, locations along Old 66. Continuing our series on Historic Highway 66. Working. You are, are you the local are you the local sheriff? You no, want to be on TV? I'm with the Arizona Highway Patrol. Arizona Highway Patrol. Yes. Yeah. We patrol this area along with the sheriff's office and frequently come in here to have a burger and do our paperwork. What's your name? <laughs> Dave Kiwan Emptywa. Uh -huh. Driving, <laughs> speeding. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much everything we do. Yeah. Pretty much every stop we make. And, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you remember 66 when it was uh, when it was open? I remember going through here as a child uh -huh. before, the, before the freeway got, got here. and. Uh, a lot of it has changed and any money either, but I the good Lord looked after me. I I fed I fed people, I put gas in their cars, I had to buy old cars, my yard was full of old cars. Because they were breaking down the time they got here. And they managed to get on to California to get jobs.